uh, where you should have been exposed to basic concepts of drafts and so on and so forth. So I'm going to build on that to give you more, in this case, more applications, I would call, uh, or rather I would call it, more applications of graph theory. Um, um, I, I, I will begin with a review. Because I, I normally do a review, well, I'm going to do some review first. Okay? Basic concepts. Okay? By this, I intend to wake you up. Okay? By invoking a new, or from you, a new, actually, those concepts which you already have come across as the lower levels, so that you get more very fair to try to understand what I mean when I talk at this a bit higher level, it's very easy for uh, you will come across graphs, even at higher level, you come to master's, PhDs, you will still deal with graphs, uh, because you are mathematicians. But we will try to do a review first of graph. What is graph? Because before I, I introduce any theory, any lemma, any corollary, any definition, I think you should know what graphs are in the first place before you ever know how to apply them. But I will give you a good tidings that graphs are perhaps the most widely or the most widely applied concepts of mathematics. Graphs are concepts, graph theory concepts are concepts you find almost in all branches of mathematics, in applied mathematics, in pure mathematics, combinatorics, and even other fields in social sciences, in biological sciences, and so on and so forth, physical sciences and so on. So they are almost widely apply. In fact, they have a very beautiful and very useful connection with algebraic geometry, which we know is also a very important concept in physics, astronomy, and so on and so forth. You will come to know and when you come to when you go to higher, higher levels uh, as you climb uh, from this level to master's. You will find out that graphs are very important, and they are very also connected with uh, connection networks in electronics, interconnection networks. They are also very related to communication networks in computer science and also in uh, communication engineering, and so on and so forth. So they are almost everywhere. Is it clear? In scheduling, you will hear in uh, putting off uh, timetables, in putting off interview timetables, in putting off uh, maybe company's performance, evaluation, and so on and so forth. They are also there. So they are one of the most important aspects or concept of mass which you find in different ramifications, in different fields of things. But like I promise, I will do a review and ask you, I will try to know what is your level of understanding of these concepts, of these objects, of this uh, area of specialization. But how, how do you understand graph? What do you know about graphs? What is graph? So my first question is, what is graph? Okay. Can you define graphs? I'm sure you have met them. In fact, you should have started meeting graphs from UG2 when you do the uh, algebra one, because it's part of mathematical structures, groups, strings, order sets, four set, uh, chains, lattices. Graphs should be there. At least the basic understanding or definition. Yes, and you did uh, discrete mathematics, 
It's a whole lot of issues in Iran with some application to switch and some to sign. But what is Iran? You are Iran in UG4. Hmm? What is Iran? Do you have an idea? Oh, do I have to answer myself. Graph a mathematical structure. Mathematical structure. You underline mathematical structure because I also want to know whether you know what mathematical structures are. As such as what is a mathematical structure. You should know what it is. Hmm? Consistent of sets. Okay, these sets we call we can call them V and E of vertices and edges. Okay. Related by a well defined order of connectivity. Let, let me call it connectivity. You have three concepts here which I highlight. One, you have a set, it's mathematical structure, normally represented by G. Mathematical structure, normally we represent it by letter G. Without prejudice to another mathematical structure report on which was a group, which we also represent by G, okay, which are consisting of two subsets. One set of vertices, second set of edges, and the two sets are related by a connectivity relation. Well defined connectivity relation. By related mean there is a relation. Well defined relation which connects the vertices as dots with edges as lines. Is it clear? Now, if you have this, you say you have a, the combination of this will give you a graph. Okay. So I'll urge you to go back and review, read more on your first notes on graphs. Mm -hmm. So that you'll acquaint yourself more with those basic concepts, basic definitions which are very important in what we are going to try to understand as applications of graphs. Because at this level, you should also know the application of these concepts. So I don't, just, just, you don't just know graphs, you all know the application of graphs. And you start from there. If you are going to write your project, your thesis, your dissertations, normally you start on applications, isn't it? So you, but you have to know the concept first before you know how to apply it on something else. Look at that. Yes, it's like you are trying to operate a vehicle. You have to know what that vehicle is first, isn't it? Before you can operate it, I remember before you can drive it. You have to know where your brake is, where your accelerator is, where your Approach is where you are. Before you start to apply it to make use of it, you can imagine you are in a car and driver is asking you to tell him where the accelerator is. Or where is the, <laughs> which one is the clutch? <laughs> hmm? How will you feel? Uh, he's, he's trying to, let, to drive you to labor me. And you have to tell him. What is accelerator? You have to differentiate between accelerator and brake for him to. So you have to know these concepts 
before you start thinking about how to apply. So that's why I said I will tell you, take you through some reviews. These graphs are made of sets. These sets are V. V, actually, I will, let, I will call it V of G, okay? V of G is set of VI. Where each VI is a vertex, vertex. Sometimes we we'll call it point. In G, okay. Of course, I is an index sense. It's a number of an index sense. Okay. Uh, I told you graphs from 10 by 6 on the edges, so, so each one is like a point now, uh, or a cycle of, for a point of vertex. Well, then this is E of G, uh, represented by EIs. Each EI is an edge. Edges are sometimes called line in G. I in the index sense. So, so this implies that your graph is a pair V of G, E of G. Of course, connected by some relation called the relation governs the connectivity between V and G. So you have a pair I have a binary operation, in this case we call it a relation, which connects the vertices and the other edges together. So this is a structure, then. it's a mathematical structure, because that brings us forward to mathematical. Mathematical structures are those algebraic structures which are governed by some laws or axioms in which the elements are what? Related, bare, or through some what? laws or axioms or relationship. So I think the best, the simplest one to, uh, to remember is relation. The elements, uh, remember each one of these is an element. For example, D of G, you expect it to have elements D1, D2, D3, D3. Just like E of G will also have elements E1, E2, and so on. Now, the relation, there exists some relation which maps what? Which relates VI to what? A relation. Isn't it? Or do they just come along? They have to be, they have to be a relation. And that what differentiates mathematical structures formal mathematical structures like group strengths, graphs, and with the ordinary sets. Because sets are just collections of objects. You don't need any relationship. Just collect objects together. You have a set, isn't it? But when you require a, mass, a relation, then you now start talking about mathematical structures, which are differentiated by those relations. Is the relation plus, you get a difference. Is the relation times, yeah, is a relation connectivity like this, you get different structure. Is it plus, is a relation plus or minus, plus and times, different structure. Is a relation the Boolean type or an and, you get another Boolean algebra, isn't it? Well, when you have maybe just star, you have groups. When you have plus, minus, you have rings. And you have, in that case, order fields, integral domains, skewed fields, ideals, and so on and so forth. And when you have groups, you have commutative groups, semi non commutative groups, permutation groups, cyclic groups, and that order. You have O and AND, you have Boolean algebra. And from Boolean algebra, you can construct lattices. Can construct chains. So, depending on the type of binary operations, you are going to have different types of mathematical structures. 
or you have grains graphs like this where relation is defined to connect vertices with the uh, edges. Now, uh, okay, good. So, So depending on these laws of association or laws of relationship, you are going to have different types of graphs, you know. So you have types, I'll add you to read more on types of graphs, you know, we have so many of them. Oh, you have the empty graph. Mm -hmm. You have these directed graphs. You have the pseudo graph, pseudo graph, sometimes called what? Yeah. Multi graph, multi. Sometimes called the multi. Then you also have the complex graph. You have the bipartite, bipartite graphs. Okay. You have trees, tree graph. Combination of trees, graph will give you forest, isn't it? And so on and so forth. You have caterpillar graphs, and so on and so forth. You have the pancake. Look like cakes, and so on and so forth. So we have a lot of connections. That's why I told you there are a lot of connections with algebraic geometry. I'm sure you have known about this simple graph. Of course, you have simple graph. You have forgotten about this simple graph. Okay, you have just boxes and edges. I'm sure you have uh, done a lot. I have learned a lot about so maybe definitions. I'll give you some definition. One by one empty graph. Graph with no edges. Graph with no single edge. A graph which has not a single edge is called an empty graph. It's just made up of vertices. Okay? No matter how many vertices are, you have them go example, a graph like this. Is this V1, V2, V3, V4, G1, G2, empty graph. Okay. So an empty graph is such a graph in which what? VI is not related to VG. Okay. For any V and J. So VI has no relation with VJ or I different from V. Okay. You don't you cannot establish any relationship. So they cannot connect. There is no relationship. They are just standing independent actually of each other. Okay? Of course, the I, V, J are in G. They are members of G, but they are not related. Okay? Can you give an example? You have, if you have a family which is not related. Mm -hmm. In some sense. Just like we said, it might be the simplest idea 
uh, simplest way we we can describe sex. Sex are like just mere collections of objects which are not necessarily related to each other. Cool. So it just looks like ordinary concept of sex, like the uh, was uh, everybody remember the sex as the building block of all the other mathematical structures. Uh, if, for example, in this class, you have a collection of students who have no relationship with one another. Then, if we do not use as vertices, it will not use as a vertex, then it means you, you present an empty graph. Mm -hmm. For example, each one of you comes from a different state, something like that. Or each one of you comes from a different family, so you have no family relationship with that. Because you form, you are going to form an empty graph. Is it clear? Yes. What other instances, in which other instances do you imagine having an empty graph? Because sometimes these concepts are also very useful. Mm -hmm. They are also what? Very useful. If you are trying, if for example you are trying to set up an, a connection network, uh, let me see even be specific, an electric connection network, which is supposed to carry currents through. You may need require a combination of wires or conductors which have no relationship with one another, isn't it? So that you are going to avoid some sort of uh, maybe compulsion, uh, compulsion. While one wire is carrying positive, the other is negative, the other is neutral. So the two are not related, and so on and so forth. We are trying to form a committee to interview, to, to make some judgments. It may be more desirous that we get a team of people who have no connection with one another, so that their judgment should be independent. Is it clear? Maybe you bring a Nigerian, you bring a Togolese, you bring a, a Kenyan to decide about a case concerning an African country. When you know Nigerian has no connection with Togolese, this has no connection. So I told her when you when they come up with this issue, you say there are independent definitions. Because they form an empty graph with no connections. So the judgment are supposed to be independent. Whatever it is, yeah. so sometimes you also have okay, there are so many situations where you are in architecture, <coughs> if you as architectural engineers, they may also need some combinations of objects to come up with a, a pattern, such that the two are different. Maybe you put yellow here, you put green there, you put the blue there, so, so that you don't you don't mix colours, so that you can come up with some pattern. Or where you have toilets, you are not supposed to have living rooms. Where you have this, you are not supposed to have kitchen. Where you have so you have independent units of aspect in your drawing, in your architectural design. And so on and so forth. If you are a computer programmer, you may need independence. You are designing a program, for example, which runs uh, in many loops. Uh, and so on and so forth. So you have this. Then digraphs. Digraphs are, are definition one, definition two, digraph. Those graphs, those graphs are giving proof definition. So I mean, just had it one. I'm not here to give definitions. Those graphs which do which have a sense of direction, sense of direction. 
Okay. Normally represented. Normally. Normally. Illustrated. Illustrated. Using arrow heads. Arrow. Or arrow heads. For example, I have EG. A graph like this. Those are the graphs with the direction. We call them a, we call it a, the graph with some direction indicated on X. We call it diagram or directed graph. That's another name for it. Now, directed graphs are normally used in networks, be it communication network, electronic networks distribution network, transport networks, and so on. They are always represented using arrows. So that you know the movement. In this case, your graph looks like a vector. So the lines are some sort of vectors that have well-defined directions of movement. From the initial, what you call the the initial stage is called the, normally it's called the start state. The last point is called the end point, or the terminus, okay? Or this one, another name is origin. You have origin and terminus, so start state, end state. If you know how the terminology is used, okay? For terminal stage, something like that or end points and uh, uh, end states. Uh, when you have graphs like this with arrows, we call it a directed uh, graph. Mm -hmm. For example, if you are coming to this university is to be represented using the graph, then we say when you are in UG1, you are V1. When you are in UG2, you are what? D2, something like that. Oh, so you have UG1, UG1 here, you go to UG2, you go to what? UG, who's out now? UG3, then you go to what? UG4, and after UG4, you are supposed to, to you are expected to what? to graduate to maybe NYS, maybe to, to jobs, something like this, or most of if you want to continue, okay, something like that, so you can have a loss like this, or master's, PhD, and so on and so forth, or you may likely come back to UG1, or UG4, Get a withdraw, you come back to UG1, oh, and repeat again UG2, UG3. You may have a situation like that, okay? So these are directed graphs because they have some point of movement, you know, from wire to wire. Yeah. And we would call them the pseudo graphs, are those graphs which have multiple edges, okay? Those graphs with multiple edges, more than one. For example, somebody here from UG1 to UG2, instead of proceeding to UG3, coming back to UG1, okay? Or after UG3, he comes back to UG2, and start again. When you have a graph like this, you call it multi 
drug or pseudo Okay, these are the drugs you have. Or for example, when you are in UG4, you have an option, you either go to NYSC, or maybe pro proceeds to masters. But this one is, is uh, maybe parallel. Somebody do this. Maybe we say masters. This is NYSC is masters. Proceeding to job or going for PhD, something like that. You have multiple lines, and so on and so uh, Complete graph uh, is that graph in which every vertex is connected Every edge, all the edges, okay, of the graph. A single vertex, let me call it a single vertex, is connected to all the edges of the graph. We call it a complete graph. For example, a triangle graph. A single vertex is connected to every other, call it every other vertex. V1, V2, V3. This is the simplest example of complete graph, because if you take vertex V1, you find out that V1 is connected to V2 and V3. Those are the other vertices in triangle. Likewise, what? B21 is connected to B3 and B3 is connected to B1 and So every vertex you pick is going to be connected to all other other vertices in the graph. Then we call it your complete graph. Complete. When your graph is like that, you say you have a complete graph. Okay. Bipartite graph. So our current discussion will now center on bipartite graph. And trees to some extent. Simple graph is not about it. So bipartite graph. Maybe this is where I will now start off with you because you may not have known bipartites at your lower levels. What are bipartite graphs? Have you come across them? You may not have come across them. Oh. Okay, bipartite graphs are those graphs in which uh, the vertex sets. Of one uh, is related to the vertex sets of another. The other, let me call it the other. Those graphs containing, so what I omitted from this definition is that those graphs containing at least two vertex sets. At least two, because there can be three, there can be. At least two, that's the meaning of pi. Those graphs contain with at least two vertex sets. Okay, 
in which the able vertex in one is connected with the other, the bad, uh, with other vertex in the other set. Because you have two sets now, so you think a vertex in one set, it will be connected to a vertex in the other sets. So, so it has to graph G, normally noted M, M, something like that. Okay, M, M containing two vertex sets, okay? With two vertex sets, M and M, okay? Okay. Let me say of order M and M such that every VI, okay? in one set is is connected with some VG in the other. so that I don't want us to be too strict. VI in one set is connected with some BJ in the other. So you have, for example, let me give you an example where you understand better. Well, let me call this uh, B1, B2, B3, okay. Whatever will be for here, and then you may call it uh, U1, U2, U3, like this. Okay. Call this set as this Y. Okay, so there are two sets. That means X, you can see your uh, X is the vertex of V1, V2, V3, and your Y is U1, V2. So there are two sets, X and Y, isn't it? Now, if you now say that V1 to V3, Something like this. One to this. Okay. Um, okay. You now you now let how you do like this one. You do like this. You can say this is a bipartite. Okay. The vertex set in one are connected to the vertex set in the other. Now let me give you another example of bipartites. You may have so many other examples. You can decide to, you can call this G1. So the order of 1, 2, 3, for the order of X is 4, so this is G4. 
one, two, three, four. Ten. The order of y is still one, two, three verses. So this is G fourteen. Okay. Containing four verses in one and three verses in another. What are the example of bipartites? One unit, any two relation, relationship between any two sets. Then you have a bipartite. Two sets which cannot relate to themselves, but they can relate with the other. So then you have a what? Bipartite. And the example is a student's versus their results, isn't it? Students versus their results. So if I have a students in one set here, set S, for students, so I have one, two, three, four, five, six, and this is R, let me use R with R three digits to rings, to mean results. So I have my results here, I will call this S1, S2, S3, S4, S5, S6, and so on. But in results, I have maybe A, B, C, D. Then I will require that students will be related to their results. So a bipartite. Maybe first students as C, S2 has A, something like this, S3 L, something like this, S4 B, S5 also B, S6 A, and so on and so forth. Then what we do? We don't have ego. You may, you may have S7, if you like, with D, and so on and so forth. This is also a bipartite. Okay, maybe the rest have F. The 100 students from S7, the rest will have F, F, F. So all of them will be going to F. Is it clear? Or you will have a bipartite. Student cannot relate to fellow students on the basis of result. Result cannot relate to result, but student can relate to results. Isn't it? Yes. So this is one of the uh, applications of bipartites. Another application of bipartite you also come to know. It's maybe when you try to relate uh, um, deaths of us. So people, you have people here, and you have D. People here, first person, second person. People with their deaths of us. So you also have another bipartite. People and their weight in kilograms. You also have another but because different people have their different weights. People and their what? People and their hmm, I have said better, their height. You have people with different heights, isn't it? People with their characters, <laughs> different people, different characters, and so on and so forth. So you have a lot of ways you can group a bipartite. If you have a football team, you are a good coach, you should construct a bipartite to know maybe the, the performance, uh, how to rate your players. Which and which players are good at scores, isn't it? Which and which players are good at defending, which and which players are good at what? At running, which one, and so on and so forth. So you have players versus uh, maybe capabilities. Is it clear? 
for expertise. So you know A, A to A to score it, B also to score it, C to defend and so on. So you know when to when you are going to substitute, you know who you are substituting for which job. Is it clear? Yes. And so on and so forth. Uh, you have a group of um, people and uh, uh, yes, and you have so many cases like that to consider using bifurcate. Once you have any division of uh, responsibilities, I say you should start talking, thinking about bifurcate or preferences. Mm -hmm. Yes, people and their skills is also another bifurcate. How many of you here uh, are good carpenters? How many of you here uh, are good welders? How many of you here? A good tailors. How many of you here are uh, <laughs> good boxers? Or how many, <laughs> how many of you here are melonious? How many of you here uh, are good ones? Mm -hmm. mm, yeah, maybe something like that. So you can, you can now gauge your capability in your class. How many can dance well? How many can't dance? How many can dress well? How many uh, are that? How many are this, how many are that? You can start to rank capabilities and so on and so on. Well, even when you want to compare, you have a set of people with, with different choice now. You have people versus choice. You have sets of gifts, set of people. Who will want to take bread? Who will want to take a bottle of coke? Who will want to take, you so you now relate people with what? Choices that given a particular something so that before you know you will have it. So this is actually one of the graphs which will be very uh, of interest, uh, interesting to us as we consider uh, other graph priority concepts associated with it. Um, I don't know. So in this case, maybe I will go to. I want to touch, since we have talk, started talking about buffer types, maybe I'll talk about matching. How do you match this? Match one against the other heads. So you talk about matching, match. And the next concept we will look at, match. Match. Good. Um, I will give. I will start with an example. If you have five people, A, B, C, D, E. Consider it's five people. Five people. A, B, C, D, and two, three, four. Okay. You want to match them with five jobs. Okay. We wish to match. Okay, match them. Match them with five jobs. Small A, small B, small C, small D, small D. So these are people, these are jobs. Now, what do you think about is now qualifications. You now start talking about, before, before you give somebody a job, you have to know his qualification, so that you can know how to match him to a particular job, isn't it? They are looking for, maybe it's a school. When you say lecturer cadre, you don't bring a laborer to match him with that job, isn't it? Because of his quality. Maybe he, has only, he only attended primary school, or he has not even attended any school. So you cannot match him with lecturer cadre. Or you are looking of laborer. Normally you don't attach lecturers to was labor job. 
they may not be too strong to, to do the labor and work and so on. So you need to match. So you now say A is match to D, something like that. B to C, C to A, B match to C, and C is match to A and E. And this capital C, this small C is match to A and E. D to C and D, D is match to C and D. And E is match to B and E. And B is match to B and E. Depending on their qualifications, they can do this. How do you represent it in form of bipartite? You do two graphs. Two. So the first one, you say this is A. These are people called. This is B. This is C. Or oh, you will not capture this. <laughs> okay, let you do it. Too. This is A. This is B. This is C, this is D, and this is E. This is one set now. Okay. And the second set, you know, this is small A, small B, small C, small D. Now A is much to D, so you now draw a line. This is that way is much to D job. Then B is to C. You draw a line B to C. C is to A. C is much to A. And the same C is also much to E. And then what? D is much to what? C. And it's also much to D. While E is much to B, and it's also much to. So this is a five-partite pictorial. So pictorially, you can see each one. What are according to his skills, which job he should be much to? He should be considered for. Is it clear? Should be because so if you are looking for if you are arranging interview, you will interview A for the job what? You will interview B for jobs. C. You will interview C for two jobs, A and E, and find out which one is best. At. D is to interview for C and D, and so on and so forth. Our goal in matching is to find a family of ages such that each person is assigned one job. Is it clear? That's our job. And no two people are assigned to a single job. When you do the interview, when you do the interview, you want to now force them, you want to now recruit them. You have two jobs, you have two things to consider. You cannot assign one employee to do two different jobs. Is it possible? For example, he is a lecturer, he is your lecturer and he is your messenger. It's not possible. You either should employ him as a lecturer or employ him as a Just like you cannot give that very job you want to two different people. Like this course I'm taking. It's not likely that it will be assigned to two of us. Normally you assign it to just one lecture. 
you don't assign your course to do different lectures. Isn't it? And so on and so forth. And there are jobs like that, which are not only teaching. Uh, for example, you don't assign, uh, if you want to, maybe you are going to do some marriage relationship. You don't think of assigning two husbands to one wife, isn't it? You will have to restrict one husband, one wife. Is it clear? So you have... Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, okay. And it was a compass may not be true, but for, the, for this one, you have to make sure <laughs> that it is. So this, this has the two goals you need here, a matching. Now, how do you do this? Now, to do this, we assume the following. We assume no two ages have common buttons. Here, we are going to refine this because here you can see that uh, this vertex D has two edges, one edge, one. So this one, and also C has two edges. Yes, so we have to refine this if you want it to be matching because matching has to be one to one. Is it clear one to one? So we have a definition. Before we arrive at matching, we need the following definition. Matter has is sharing. These edges are sharing this vertex. These edges are sharing this, so we have to refine this. Okay? So it's not this is not a match. This one is not a So now let M be a set of vertices of vertex, uh, set of vertices. Now a vertex B is covered by M if B is incident in M. This is another definition. Uh, we say that uh, another motivation, maybe, definition to motivate you. Let M be the final enemy of parts. Also, in or in G, okay? A vertex V is, is said to be is said to be covered by this M if it is incident O. Remember M uh, uh, yeah. If it is incident, okay? It is incident. Meaning what? Mm -hmm. Meaning that it's an H which connects to that B in M, okay? Remember, B M is the family of buses, but of G, of course. I mean, like sub, sub, subset of G, of course. Now, a buttons is incident if it, if what? If it connects it by an H, and that so that's an H which now connects that vertex in M. That's another motivation. Now we we'll come back. Now we have some motivations here. Let us come back to the, our graph from G. It is not possible to find independent set such that all vertices are covered in G. So it means. We cannot have independent sets in this graph. It's all covered by G. Because when you have people like A, B, and D, people like A, B, and D 
are going to be associated with jobs C and D. Look at A, D, B, C, and what? C, A, okay? Or D, sorry, D, C. So associated with jobs C and D, it follows B will not have a job. Isn't it? If you now have the jobs, you have A, you have B, you have C4, or you have D, A, D. Then you have jobs C and D. By the time you do this, you find out that um, uh, 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 it follows B will not have a job. Because, look at it, A has taken over C. D has taken over what? D. Mm? D has taken over D. So D has no, no job. Oh, because there are two jobs. B has no job. In fact, here, B was to have C, but C was already assigned to A, but, and you cannot assign two people with the same job. Like I said, you cannot appoint two presidents in a county. Isn't it? In United Nations, each president has only one seat. If you see Nigeria, only one person should sit there. Isn't it? So, suppose that this is United Nations, maybe it's Nigeria, Niger. Uh, these are six. Nigeria, Niger, Ghana, and you have only two seats. Nigeria will sit here, Ghana will sit, so Niger will have no, no seats. So it's not a good match. Because for you to have, uh, because B, ordinarily B, B is also assigned to C, isn't it? B here should have been assigned to what? To C. But what happens if you assign B to C? It means two ages are sharing the common bus, which is not, which prohibits this independence. It's not independent. Okay? So you cannot do that. So you don't have answer. You cannot cover. So these sets, of course, C and D are independent, but they do not cover this set because B has no. It's not incident with any of the two. So this does not cover uh, that set. So. Uh, so in fact. Independent set is also called a matching. Independent sets are called matching. So if you want to do a matching here, what do you do? If you want to create, you have to create independent sets. For example, you have assigned A to D. So you can leave if you want to refine this. By the time you are offering, offering jobs now, what you need to do is to say A, B, C, D. And then these are jobs A, B, C, D, and E. So how do you know? You say you have already assigned A with what? A with D. So you cannot assign anybody you have assigned B with what? C. You cannot assign anybody with it. You have assigned C with what? A. Yeah, you cannot assign anybody with that job. You have assigned D with what? C. You have interviewed D against two jobs, C and D. But C is 
Both C and D are occupied. So he has no job. Is it clear? So it's, uh, you will say sorry to D. What of uh, what of uh, E? He is, he, is, he is interviewed for two jobs, B and uh, or he, are not, he cannot get, but you can get E. Oh. So you can get this. D, D is not, has not been interviewed for D. For well, visa is a problem. This is not good much. This, this one is not a good match. D matching B. Except if, okay, you want to match D with, with what? So it's, D has not been interviewed for D, I think. Is it clear? Except, but C, how many people have been interviewed for C? B and the D, oh? Yes. But D was also interviewed for D. B was, B was interviewed for... B was interviewed only for C, oh? Hmm. Which has already been, so this one does not present uh, good much. So you, you have two problems now. One, you have somebody here who was interviewed but has no job. A second problem, you have a job here which has no body assigned to it. Although he was interviewed for D. Okay. What of if you give E the job B? E, why is E O? He was interviewed for B. If you give him B, then E will be taken. Will C get it? Then you give C, you give C. Now if you like, you can give him E. You want to create a job for, then who, who has no job now? He has, or he has no. He was interviewed for C, C and D, and they are all covered. Uh, then, who is going for AC? C was interviewed for E and the A. Now you have given E to somebody, so you can give him A. Oh, you have you have already assigned it to him to Eko. Oh, sorry, you have assigned it to Eko. Ah, no, you cannot because D, D was interviewed for what? For C and D. Ah, no. Okay, you cannot escape this problem. You still have two problems. Same problem. So you, this was not a good match. It is not actually a match. Because you will always have somebody who has no job, and you will always have a job with nobody. Yes. So that's why this, uh, this one is not a match. There is no way you can turn it into a match. But you, I will give you another example now of independent sets. So these sets are not independent. Well, we can construct independent sets. Let's see. But you know what, what organizations do if they have these problems? They will call for another interview for this job now. Yes. They will advertise this one. Some, some people can come and they will select. Okay, now let's, let's see this example. Graph G.
aqui. Esse escravo. Esse escravo. E. Esse escravo. Esse escravo. Now, how do you match this? You can match independences and B. Also, B, G, L, I, N, Okay. So, what is your matching now? You have your matching B1 to B2. B3 to B6. B4 to This is a matching. So you can have this independence. For example, A, B, and D, you can match B with D. They have no vertex in common, isn't it? This, the two edges have no but they do not share any vertex, is it? Also, B does not share a vertex with G, C, G. Isn't it? This one also B does not share any vertex with G. They have no same common. It has no G and B have nothing to do with L. So B G are all independent sets. This is independent set, this is also independent. So in that one, in that case, uh, in this three, in B4, this is B4 then. Okay. In that case, we have the following definition. An independent set M is called maximal if M is not properly contained in another independent set. So how you have the, the, an independent set? M is called Maximal, maximal with L. Okay. If M is not properly contained in any other independent. That means M is not properly contained in any M dash, where M M dash are independent. So we have two independences, and we call. We call an independent cell maximal if it is not properly containing any other independent cell. Now in this, the first one, let me call this M1, this one M2. Suppose I call this M1, I call this, is M1 maximal? Hmm? Mm -hmm. 
it looks it's like it's, it's maximal because it is not contained in the amphibian. Remember, D is not here, isn't it? So it's not properly contained. And if you add any any edge on top of M1, you will have problem. M1 is B and the D. What happens if you decide to add this HC? You get a common matrix. What about if you add A? What about if you add E? You get a common matrix. So, and also if you add G, you also get a common matrix. So you cannot add any vertex, any edge. So it's maximal key. Likewise, this one, BGL, is also maximal because if you add any edge to it, you get a problem because you don't have an independence. So the two are, each one of the two is maximal. So what is your problem now? They are all independent sets and they are all, they are both maximal. But you need, to, certainly you need to distinguish one from the other because they are not the same. This one is B and D, this one is B, G and L. And the order, this one has order two, this one order three. The order is not bad, they are all maximum. What is this? So maybe you need to go further than maximum then and get another definition. Okay. Both M1 and 2 are maximal, so we have a problem of distinguishing them. So we have another definition now to distinguish between the two. Let alpha prime of G be the H independent of G set of G. This, we call it maximum, maximum uh, of maximum cardinality of all independent set of edges. Then, we now have a maximum matching. An independent set M of edges is called maximum matching if M is alpha prime. So now, what you need to do to differentiate between the two, you look at their cardinality. So we'll claim this to take, to take on the cardinality. We look at the cardinality. So we now do not, we do not, uh, we wish to, uh, we may wish to, to distinguish. Marcus. Between M1 and uh, M2. Okay. We note that or let us not say we not sorry. We int we we introduce another concept. Alpha of G. Okay. Okay. No. Uh, let me call it alpha or gamma or whatever. Let me call it gamma G what? Gamma G called the maximal cardinality card of independent sets in G, okay, then with respect to gamma of G, we not what? We not
that M1 will have what? M1 will have what? Gamma of G equals to M2 half. Gamma of G, okay, will be what? Meaning what? Meaning what? M2 has higher cardinality. This implies M2 has what? Has higher gamma of G than what? M1. Okay. So we now say that um, we now define like this. We define maximum matching. Maximum match. Now each one of them is a matching, of course, because each one is independent set, but one is bigger than the other. So we say we now define maximum matching. So we say we now define definition maximum match I think we have no problem understanding that independent sets correspond to match every independent set is a match which is one to one corresponding to the two sets isn't it yes but what is maximum so we have a uh, alpha g Maximum matching, so in this case, uh, an independent set is called a maximum if M, an independent an independent set M is called maximum, maximum. So you now differentiate this maximum with maximal. The, the other one was maximal. This is maximum with you. As maximum matching if the cardinality of M is actually gamma of G. So in this case, therefore, the gamma of G is what? In these two cases, the gamma of G, which is taken to be, is actually by definition, the maximum of maximum of gamma of G gamma G of M wire M is a margin. So this earlier definition implies that gamma of G is defined as the maximum of the all the all the what? Maximals. <laughs> Get the maximum of them then. So if the cardinality of M is gamma of G then it is maximum match. If the cardinality is not G, it is not maximum. It's a matching, but not a maximum matching. Good. What is our time? OK. Maybe we'll stop at um, we'll stop here. And, uh, the next time we meet, we take a theorem and uh, another one. Any questions? Uh, no questions? Because I know some of you have started sleeping already. <laughs>